What about the children? To ignore is so easy. So many innocent children who choose the wrong way. What about the children? Oh boy, remember when we were children And if not for those who loved us And who cared enough about us Where would we be today? All right, here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my wonderful family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Kadeja. Okay, um, a couple of y'all made a couple comments on the last video that uh, um, that was concerning child abuse and um, my opinion uh, about. You know, like I said, this job doesn't come with a manual. I know it. And we all make mistakes. I've made them. Anybody that's a parent has made mistakes. Okay, so the the, the, the video wasn't meant to um, act like I'm just this perfect parent or, or I know the perfect parents or we've been perfect parents. I, that wasn't my intention. And I hope that those of y'all who get it, understand that. What I was trying to do and what I'm going to attempt to clarify right now is some of the symptoms and um, the behaviors, the uh, manifestation of child abuse. Okay. Now, and if you do any of these things or if you know somebody that is caught up in this type of stuff, then that means that they're being abused. I got a moth flying around here that's driving me crazy. Um, so y'all have to bear with me because he got to he's got to get it he has to get it all right he wants to fly all around me okay so with that being said you know most of us have grew up in abusive households to some degree some more than others some more than most but any intentional harm or mistreatment to a child under 18 is considered child abuse Child abuse takes many forms which often occur at the same time. Okay, let's just get that straight. Most of these things happen at the same time. Okay, physical abuse. Physical child abuse occurs when a child is purposely and physically injured or put at risk of harm by another person. Okay, now, I am a, um, a person that you know, I go, I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of let the punishment fit the crime, but because of the nature of society, I have to also put that in perspective when I'm dealing with these child abuse laws, because what the dominant society likes to do to us is they like to put middle class analogies on ghetto conditions. And that's just not going to work for me. And I'm a realistic enough person enough to understand that. Um, I understand that if we don't teach our children certain things, that the police will shoot them down. And it's okay for them to do that, but it's not okay for us to incorporate corporal punishment. Now, that to me is ridiculous. But at the same time, I always do videos about if you have to go the route of corporal punishment, discipline, I mean, punishment is supposed to teach. It's supposed to be an act of a teachable act. Okay, it's not supposed to leave the kid leaving resentful, angry, um, wanting to do something to you. And that usually happens when you feel that the person that's beating you is not giving you any explanation. Um, is it um, sensitive enough to know why you did that? And is sensitive to left enough to let you know why they had to do what they did. To me, that's a um, uh, 
Like I said, there's no there's no manual that goes with this. And I'm not saying what works for me, it works for you. But I, this is common sense that I try to adhere to, especially, get, again, given the situation and the conditions. Um, if a child of mine is about to put his hands on the stove and he keeps continuing doing it, I'm not going to keep saying, stop saying, Johnny, don't put your hand on the stove. Johnny going to get his hand tagged, okay? And then that is going to uh, put a little more fear in him about what to do and what not to do. Now, is that a sexual abuse? No. Is that some form of physical abuse? Yes. Is it some sort of emotional abuse? Well, I think that happens, or the emotional abuse happens in the um, in the environment, like I said, when there's no communication. So, I'm going to continue to read these attributes, and then you have to fill in the gray areas, because it's just not all black and white, all right? Sexual abuse. A sexual... Sexual child abuse, any sexual activity with a child, such as fondling, oral, genital contact, intercourse, exploitation, and exposure to child pornography. You understand that? Any exposure to child pornography. Emotional abuse. Emotional child abuse means injuring a child's self-esteem or emotional well-being. It includes verbal and emotional assault, such as continually belittling and berating a child, as well as isolating, ignoring, or rejecting a child. And what's interesting about this is this is what society does to black people in general, uh, the, the ones who haven't followed the blueprint. And so the result of that emotional abuse is a lot of the detrimental behavior you see with anybody. So it's not limited to a race, but what happens is, in my opinion, because I think we live in an, an abusive, under a, an abusive regime, under an abusive apartheid in some kind of way, most of us have an emotional abuse that is incredible. Most, you know, because we carry the emo emotional abuse in our bodies from the pain of the past. So we have been in, we have had our self-esteem and emotional well-being um, just pretty much ripped to shreds, annihilated by the dominant society. And so we have to work extremely hard to get from up under that dogma, okay? Because you know it, it, it includes verbal and emotional assault, okay? Anytime you tell somebody that they have to sit in the back of the bus or use a certain type of faucet, I mean, that's all crazy making. Okay, medical abuse. Medical child abuse occurs when someone gives false information about illness in the child that requires medical attention, putting the child at risk of injury and unnecessary medical care. Okay, neglect. A child neglect is failure to provide adequate food, shelter, affection, supervision, education, or dental and medical care. Now, this is very important, y'all, because what this is is in my opinion, is being poor. So there's a lot of people that can't meet these needs, and they want to, but they have to give their child up to foster care. The society has turned into a, a place now where you can't be poor. So see, this is what um, a lot of people don't understand. You have to make people whole so they can even not be poor. Uh, an involuntarily abusive parent. I get it. Because things like this needs to be challenged um, for a dominant rich person to say a neglect is failure to provide adequate food, shelter, affections. Uh, it's kind of difficult to put that on somebody when 60% or 55% of African Americans don't even have a job. So see, that's, it's just the biasness. It's the crazy making inside of the law. So then now you're an abusive parent. Now you got to give your child a foster care so they can take your child and place them in a home and give that person two or $3,000 a month instead of let, giving you, helping you with the resources that, 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 that you possibly need so you won't fall into the uh, category of being neglect, a neglectful. Especially when you are able, if you were given the resources or if you had the resources, you would 
Um, make sure your child had adequate food, shelter, food, clothing, shelter, and affection. What are you doing in that pepper? So, you know, this that's kind of like the main reason I wanted to do this. In many cases, child abuse is done by someone the child knows and trusts, often a parent or other relative. If you suspect child abuse, report the abuse to proper authorities. Um, you know, symptoms. A child who's being abused may feel guilty, ashamed, or confused. He or she may be afraid to tell anyone about the abuse, especially if the abuser is a parent, other relative, or a family friend. That's why it's vital to watch for red flags such as withdrawal from friends or unusual or usual activities. Changes in behavior such as aggression, anger, hostility, or hyperactivity, or changes in school performance. There you go again. See, you know, this is so biased. You know, and I'm not here to, because, you know, I work and I, with children, I know that that's a real phenomenon. Children, children are abused. But some of the stuff that is such a great area, especially, um, when you put it inside of something and you make it a red flag, like hyperactivity, most black people have different energy than Caucasian people. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a difference in us culturally. And so to try to make us all, you know, assimilate to one behavior is pretty much control and that's racism. And so all this stuff is in the fabric of all these care institutions and these rules that they make for us to um, abide by diligently for our children that sometimes you, it, it's difficult to manage if you just go by what they say. So you have to understand that, in my opinion, God is still on the throne. And if you are parenting in a correct way, some of this stuff, you have to know that this is just their biases. Okay. Um, changes in school performance. Okay. You know, all right, maybe a relative died. Maybe that's a reason. Maybe uh, someone that they're close to passed away because there's a lot of murders and stuff on the streets. And a lot of times when people develop, we develop relationships with people that get killed and shot. So, or, you know, maimed or some degree. So maybe that's why the changes are in the school performance. You don't can't necessarily say that's because that kid has been abused. If they're abusive, it's because their environment is abusive. Depression, anxiety, and unusual fears. Or sudden loss of self-confidence. This right here is so freaking biased. I, you know, that's, you know, and I have to do this because, you know, this is what, you know, mental health requires for you to talk about child abuse. But when I see depression, anxiety, unusual fears, and a sudden loss of self-confidence, what do you have think happens to a black boy when he encounters a police for a for first time at 13 years old and a police officer calls him all kinds of niggas and makes him put his hands on a hot car? What do you think happens to his confidence? And is and do you expect him to be full of love or anxiety? Now this is self-explanatory. An apparent lack of supervision. Bam. Okay, we understand that. Frequent absences from school. Yes. A reluctant to leave school activity as he as if he or she doesn't want to go home. Attempts at running away. Now that's a very profound uh behavior right there because anytime a person is just constantly running away and they don't want to be at home then that would be my main criteria, number one. Are they constantly running away from home? Some of these things I wouldn't even put into the um, thought process because 
it's just red flagging cultures and not holding your own culture accountable for some of the behaviors that the people are just defending themselves against. And if you're not intelligent enough to see through all that, then it's going to be hard for you to live in, in peace with um, people that don't look like you. Rebellious or defiant behavior. <laughs> okay, self-harm or suicide, attempts at suicide. That would be number two. So from this list, as far as I'm concerned, the things I look at, the main things I look at is um, anger, is aggression. Okay, and I'm saying I'm looking at it in whole to take it out. What I'm looking at is attempts at running away, self-harm attempts, suicide attempts, Um, lack of supervision, frequent absences from school. And in my opinion, those are mostly the flags that I look for when I'm thinking about abuse because a lot of this other stuff is a reaction to white supremacy. It's a reaction um, from, it's, it's the hate that hate produced. When the police get behind somebody, a, you know, a young man has just got his license and he's 15 or 16, uh, 16 or 17, um, he's going to uh, be full of anxiety. He is going to uh, probably, um, if he's going to, you know, have some changes in his normal behavior or in his confidence because the, maybe the encounter with the law enforcement officer, especially, like, again, we talk about black children, took his confidence away, shot his friend right in front of him, or maybe he was tased for no apparent reason. So you got to deal with some of this stuff. So anyway, specific signs and symptoms depend on the type of abuse and can vary. Keep in mind uh, that warning signs are just that warning sign. The presence of these warning signs doesn't necessarily mean that a child is being abused. Thank you. Uh, physical abuse signs and symptoms. Unexplained injuries such as bruises, fractures, and burns. Injuries that don't match the given explanation. Okay. Signs of sexual abuse. Sexual behavior or knowledge that it's inappropriate for the child's age. Pregnancy or sexually transmitted infection. Blood in a child's underwear. Statements that he or she was sexually abused. Inappropriate sexual contact with other children. Emotional abuse and signs and symptoms. Delayed or inappropriate emotional development. Loss of self-confidence and self-esteem. Social withdrawal or a loss of interest or enthusiasm. Depression. Avoidance of certain situations, refusing to go to school or a bus ride, desperately seeks affection, affection, a decrease in school performance or loss of interest in school, loss of previously acquired developmental skills. Okay? And then, um, well, I'll be back with the other signs, because that probably is long enough for this video. I'll be right back. So I'm going to keep this at a certain amount of time. So I'm a little over. So what I'll do is I'll just make another video and we'll finish this up. Okay. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> 